This cold front has taken it up a notch with a severe weather outbreak now possible Monday over parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley region. We'll also see some significant storms sinking southeastern along that front from there as the week goes on. This video has the breaking details on that outbreak and more for the week ahead with custom graphics and more. So stick around. Thanks so much for joining me on this Sunday evening or Monday morning whenever you're watching. Don't forget that many of the model maps I use throughout my videos are from Weatherbell, so if you want to check out their free trial link, it is right down there in the description. Also, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button as I push towards 5,000 subscribers. Also, that final reminder that if you have any comments, questions, concerns as we go throughout this video, please do not hesitate to drop them right down there below. I will get back to you as soon as I can, either tonight or into our Monday morning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the future radar overview for the next few days, and then we'll dive really into the specifics of our Monday outbreak and more. What you can see as we go towards our Monday, July 15th, in the morning, we're going to have likely some ongoing storms across parts of Michigan, Indiana, Ohio at the minimum. Also, some storms back on over there towards the Dakotas and Minnesota. And that low you see there in southern Minnesota, that's what's going to push southeast as we go throughout our Monday, firing up that real outbreak potential over parts of Iowa, Missouri, especially there, I think, into Illinois and Indiana as we go throughout the late evening hours. Notice that really starting to fire on up here. This is just a deterministic model indicating general overview patterns, and that's why we're using it for, the, for this pattern overview. You. And even it really shows those fine lines of where we could have some of those significant storms right down here through, especially southern Wisconsin, parts of Iowa, northern Missouri, as well as through a good chunk of central and northern Illinois, heading out of the late afternoon time frame into the evening of our Monday. That's when some of these storms look to be most robust based on current model guidance, even with some of the shorter range models. Even parts of northern Indiana could certainly get in on this, if not by the 11 p.m. time frame on our Monday evening, definitely in the coming hours after that, as that low continues to trek through parts of the upper peninsula of Michigan or somewhere nearby. From there, though, we do have a little bit more to overview. We'll get into the depths of this uh, later in the video as well. Of course, always make sure you're using those timestamps in the description to navigate. Here we go towards our Tuesday. Showers and thunderstorms extending along this low-pressure system and its associated cold front from New York and Pennsylvania all the way back there towards the central plains. And then we'll continue to see shower and thunderstorm activity sag southward going through the midweek and late week time frame. Now let's see what's supporting our severe weather setup and specifically that Monday outbreak. This is as we go towards Monday around 7 to 8 p.m. depending on whether you're in central or eastern time. Any time that you see on screen throughout this video is in eastern time for you there. But let's move on from that and take a look right now at that jet stream energy. In fact, the big blast of jet stream energy that we're going to have in a small area there coming out of Nebraska into Iowa. It may look small, but it's going to pack a lot of ferocity, and I didn't yell the word big for no reason. It's because we have northern Missouri, parts of Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, into Indiana, and maybe even southern Michigan, parts of Ohio, really on alert because this is what could fuel that mesoscale convective system or a line of damaging winds primarily that could move through that area. Notice that jet stream energy continuing towards the northeast while weakening on Tuesday, that little piece of it anyway. The overall dip in the polar jet stream that supported that little dip to make its way on through that's what you're going to notice here from the Dakotas to Minnesota to the Great Lakes going towards our Tuesday, supporting more general thunderstorm chances, but some isolated severe weather even then, parts of the Northeast Ohio Valley back to the Plains. By the end of this week, heading towards our Thursday, I just want to point out, this is going to be our main zone that we're going to be watching for showers and thunderstorms as that energy is going to be bringing some cooler air and drier air into a lot of the Northern and Eastern United States, not without some storms being there towards the Southeast though, however. Skip ahead if you want to hear more about that, but let's go ahead and take a look and get into that deep dive for our Monday severe weather outbreak because I know that is what a lot of you are here for. This is the latest information as of Sunday evening on my ONW severe scale. It goes from 0 to 7, and right now we're all the way up to a level 5 of 7 in some parts of the Midwest. In fact, let's focus in on where that yellow, orange, and red area is, the level 3, the level 4, and the level 5, encompassing that area right there of the Midwest. The bullseye really on Iowa, northern Illinois, and into northern Indiana, some of those spots I've been mentioning already when showing you that future radar with the overview, showing you that overview of the jet stream. This is because a dangerous outbreak of significant damaging winds appears likely late Monday across the area with strong jet stream energy. We're going to have low-level moisture, plenty of daytime heating. That's all the ingredients that you need for an MCS or mesoscale convective system with winds upwards of 65 to 75 miles per hour at times. Isolated tornadoes as well as isolated hail along it just because you have the wind threat doesn't mean you don't have other threats as well with some of the other storms that could fire up. Notice that we will have some isolated severe weather chances in some of those dark greens and maybe even another area of scattered severe weather there coming off the high plains in that yellow level 3 of 7 zone 
in, say, the panhandle of Nebraska. So those areas will also be some spots to watch. Let's go ahead and take a look, though, at that main threat for our potential outbreak of damaging winds for our Monday. This is as we go towards the mid-morning to late-morning time frame with dew points. This shows you that moisture content, and you can see we're going to have a lot of it in the circled area primarily. And guess where that is? That lines up with everything that I've been showing you so far. So coming out of Nebraska, really into a lot of Iowa. They're into parts of Illinois where I'm showing you these 75 to 74 to 73 degree dew point readings. What these mean are that we have a lot of moisture in place. Once you get above 60 for a dew point, you're really into prime severe weather territory. Once you get above 70, you're basically going above and beyond. And we're definitely going to be well past that, even into that 75 to 80 range. Look at this. Going to go ahead and slap that circle right on down there. Northern Indiana, some parts of central Illinois, out ahead of where you see some of those blues where that line will be moving through possibly around the late evening time frame Monday. We could have some dew points well into the upper 70s here, 76, 77. So... Be ready. We've definitely got a juiced up environment. It's just whether or not the storms fire or not that we need to look at. Let's get right into that timing. This model literally just came out right before I filmed the segment. I just threw this in here. I filmed everything else prior. That's why there's some cuts. Let's jump right into this here and take a look at the brand new 00Z latest timing from the end of our Sunday. What you're noticing here. We're going to have some coverage that we're going to have to watch of showers and thunderstorms. At least according to this model, anything that I show on this model could certainly be incorrect. This is just a simulation that as we go towards our Monday morning, we'll probably have some lingering shower and thunderstorm coverage from this evening, Sunday's appetizer severe weather event, possibly over the Midwest. Some of this will still be ongoing with some rainfall over likely Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, maybe some rumbles of thunder there. What's more interesting is this coverage of shower and thunderstorm activity that we're going to have back on over here towards parts of Minnesota, maybe South Dakota, Iowa, and Nebraska getting in on this. Some of this could be severe as it pushes out of the Dakotas into Minnesota and northern Iowa. And either this line is going to hold itself together if it exists and continue producing some severe weather and form that possible MCS or maybe even derecho if it holds long enough into a damaging wind event over the upper Midwest going into our Monday, either that or it's going to have some redevelopment on its leading fringe. And I think the redevelopment's the more likely scenario, but either way, by the time you head towards the middle of the back half of the afternoon, a scenario like this is certainly not unlikely with big hail, some damaging winds, maybe isolated tornadoes getting going with some of these segments here in parts of Iowa. Looks like Iowa's going to be probably engulfed in a lot of storms, maybe even over more of the state than what you're seeing on this model here by the time we go towards 2, 3, 4 o'clock, especially depending on whether or not that earlier day line breaks up coming in from the north. Regardless, I think it's going to be the mid to the late evening time frame when things start to really ramp up in Illinois. You can see here central and northern parts of the state need to be on alert really through the afternoon and into the evening here. This is one model, but look at that bow backwards C-shape to this line. When you get a system that makes its way over 240 miles with a swath of 58 plus mile per hour wind gusts, that is a derecho. So we could certainly see this turn into one of those if it makes its way from Iowa into Illinois towards Indiana with those damaging winds upwards of 50 to 60 miles per hour. Keep in mind there is a tornado threat. We could see some tornadoes get embedded in a line like this, or especially if the cells are a little bit more isolated and have some kinks along it. So be ready for that even as this moves out of Illinois into some parts of Indiana, especially the northern parts of those two states based on the current guidance from the storm prediction center from Effingham there in Illinois all the way curling on up there to South Bend in Indiana. This model indicates that by around 8 to 9 to 10 p.m. on our Monday, we're going to be pretty active over this region. And in this model anyway, this is that new guidance, and I'm not sure if this is really in line with much of what I've seen with some of the other guidance all day today, but it shows some new development refiring back on over here over parts of central Illinois and maybe even central Indiana heading towards the middle of the night. Uh, Monday night going into early Tuesday. Either way, that's really going to depend on how fast this moves. Just be prepared through the afternoon into the evening for that. Moving beyond Monday here and giving you a look at what we can expect as we go towards our Tuesday. I've already got my preliminary early graphic for the ONW Severe Scale for then. A level 2 of 7, certainly nothing to, you know, throw away and disregard from Maine all the way back there to the high plains along that cold front that's going to continue moving southward while generally weakening. That's going to be the trend though. That's the good news out of this front that it will generally be weakening while it moves south. We'll still have some severe weather chances along it though and I'm sure a level 3 of 7 risk zone will likely be needed once some short range guidance realizes a more localized scattered risk area. That could be near the Ohio Valley but it's too early to know. Definitely stay tuned for an update on on that especially if you're subscribed to the channel you'll you will see if i post that say in the community tab or let's on take a look now day short. by day at where some of the heaviest storms and flooding potential will be 
This is as we go with some of those storms that we're going to see Monday into our early Tuesday. Look at that heaviest rain. Southeast Iowa, northern Illinois, northwestern Indiana, some parts of southern Wisconsin, southern Michigan, and northwestern Ohio. That is that bullseye. Those blues indicating at least about a half an inch of rain. Some of those yellows, oranges, and reds, it looks like northern Illinois could be in the bullseye for that. Two to four inches locally higher, maybe up to five to six. That could definitely cause some of that scattered flooding concerns, at least in that localized area. Now what you see, it says Wednesday at 2 p.m., but this encompasses the previous 24 hours. So this is mostly from Tuesday and Tuesday night. Look at the heavy rainfall there. It lines right up with where I've showed you the severe weather potential will be Tuesday from New Hampshire and Vermont, Maine, all the way back on over there towards the Central Plains. The Ohio Valley and Midwestern region of this circled area really has the best chance of at least seeing some isolated flooding. Most totals look to be in check, though, around one to three inches at the higher end. So that's the good news. Not looking at any significant flood threats developing if that remains the case, but I'll keep you updated in case things change. Going towards Wednesday through early Thursday afternoon, you can see where that heaviest rain is going to be by then. This front slowly moving southward. Keyword slowly. It's definitely not you know, racing southbound, but you can see from the New England area, this will include places like Boston and New York City, all the way down there towards Arkansas. That's where the heavier thunderstorms will be in some of that numerous fashion, really, as that fires on up on the southern side of that front. Arkansas, Missouri, that could be that hot spot border for some two to four to five to maybe even six inch totals of heavier rainfall. We'll see if we could get some isolated scattered flooding events there. And then going out of Thursday and really even into Friday and Saturday, this is going to be the area to watch from Texas all the way over there to the Carolinas as this front's actually going to stall out. In fact, as I play this out, you're going to notice as we go even towards Saturday and Sunday, heavy rainfall will continue over these areas. And even though it won't be necessarily an incredibly high amount each day, it will certainly be enough to trigger some flooding. Notice those precipitation anomalies. I already showed this graphic in my last video, but for those of you who are new to the channel, just giving you a look at my precipitation anomaly graph for midweek all the way into the weekend, above average from parts of Texas. Texas, all the way over there to the Carolinas, looking below average based on the models up there over the north central United States, which makes sense behind that front. Temperatures from the start of the week here, Monday and Tuesday to the end of the week. Let's start with Monday and Tuesday. You notice warmer than average there in the Pacific Northwest, warmer than average in a lot of the eastern and central U.S., one exception being a little cooler than average as that nice front starts to sink through over the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin. That's going to be the only benefit with this front, even though it will be producing some severe weather out ahead of it. It will bring in some nice changes behind it as by the time we go towards Wednesday and Thursday, looks like most of the Great Lakes region in the Midwest in those deeper blue shades will be about 10 degrees below normal for this time of the year. Still some ridging in the West, keeping it warmer than average. Still ahead of that front, just enough to keep it warmer than average in the southern and eastern corridors. But look at that. By the time we go towards our Friday and towards our Saturday, there at the very end of the week, closing the week out with some very nice and refreshing air for a lot of the country, at least with some thunderstorms keeping things below average there in the southeastern U.S. if it's not for the front actually moving through. The northwestern parts of the U.S. continuing to see ridging and hotter than average air, so Idaho, Montana, get ready for that. That's it for this update. If you want more breaking updates that also have these overviews in them as well, make sure to subscribe. It means a lot when you show your support to me, but also if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm always here to answer those questions. Many other channels aren't, but I am, so make sure you're dropping those down below this video. That's it for this one. I'll see you back here probably Tuesday or Wednesday.